Hi everyone, my name is Hannah Spear and I am currently a PhD student here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and I work with Dr. Mary Janowski in the area of cow-calf nutrition and today I'd like to talk to you about vitamin A in beef cow-calf cow systems and this topic has been the focus area of my PhD research and kind of the whole reason we got interested in it in the first place was because producers were having some issues in their herds that were suspected to be caused by a vitamin A deficiency. So their nutrition consultants approached us and just kind of asked about what vitamin A, current vitamin A recommendations are or what they should be, things of that nature. So we kind of started digging into it a little bit. And the more we dug around, the more that we realized there isn't really a lot of information out there on vitamin A needs of beef cows in particular. So today I'd just like to share with you uh, some vi vitamin A recommendations for beef cows and particularly across different systems, what those vitamin A supplemental recommendations would look like, as well as just give you a brief overview of why vitamin A is really, really important nutrient and it's something that we don't really think about a lot for the cow that's out on green grass vitamin a deficiency is generally not a concern for that cow but where we might start running into issues is when that cow spends less time on green grass throughout the year and that's where we run the risk of that cow becoming vitamin a deficient especially in a system, for example, where a cow might be in long-term confinement where she doesn't have access to green grass at all. And I'll kind of explain that a little more in, in depth on the next slide, but the one place, the, the first place that we're gonna see a, a vitamin A deficiency, um, if we're suspecting one, the first place it's gonna pop up is gonna be in the calves. So if you have a vitamin A deficient cow, it's we're gonna see it pop up in the calves first. And that's because calf health is something that is extremely affected by cow vitamin A status because vitamin A is a really important component of the immune system and it's gonna help that calf develop its naive immune system. And that's gonna be we all know that a strong immune system is going to be really important for the young calf. So a vitamin A deficient cow is going to, we really, we really worry about calf health in the case of a vitamin A deficiency in our cows. So vitamin A, like I mentioned, is we don't, worry about it too much for the cow that's out on green pasture and forage. And that's because that green pasture and forage contains high amounts of a compound called beta carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A. And what happens is, is that beta carotene can be used by the cow to make her own vitamin A that she needs. And while she's out grazing on green pasture for you know, an extended a period of time, she's getting way more vitamin A in her diet than she needs right away. So what she's going to do is put that excess vitamin A into storage and use it later. And, you know, later in those times where she might not be getting a lot of vitamin A in her diet. So times when she's not getting a lot of vitamin A or diet are going to be where she's eating brown grass and stored forages. And that's, because um, they're a really poor source of vitamin A, but you know, those stores that she did build up can be used in those times when her dietary vitamin intake is low and she can get by until she can get out on green pasture again. It's also worth mentioning that grains and byproducts aren't gonna provide a lot of vitamin A to the diet. So really the big take home message from this is that color of your feedstuffs is going to be a pretty good indicator of the amount of dietary vitamin A your cow is getting. If it's not green, it's not a good source of vitamin A and that cow 
is not getting a lot of vitamin A from her diet. So back on the topic of health, uh, I mentioned that cow vitamin A status is really, if we have low cow vitamin A status, we run the risk of uh, our calves becoming deficient and ill. And the really most important time that we have to pay attention to cow vitamin A status is going to be in late gestation. And the reason why is because that calf isn't born with any vitamin A stores. So it's essentially born vitamin A deficient. And that calf's only source of vitamin A at birth is going to be colostrum. And that concentration in the colostrum is dictated by what that cow has stored um, during that late gestation time frame. And that colostrum, again, is really important to establish those stores in the calf. So if that cow is deficient and has low vitamin A stores, we run the risk of the cow not putting a lot of vitamin A into the colostrum. And as a result, our calf becomes deficient. And then that calf's immune system becomes impaired and then it becomes more susceptible to disease. So vitamin A really, really going to be important for that calf. So vitamin A supplemental needs are going to depend on the system. So anytime that that cow is provided a brown forage or consuming brown forage, you need to provide supplemental vitamin A. But when um, that time that that cow spends on green grass goes down or she's in long-term confinement, that amount of supplement that that cow needs on a daily basis is going to increase because unlike the cow that's out on pasture for a good chunk of the year, she's going to need more vitamin A to help build those stores and uh, reduce her risk of developing a vitamin A deficiency. So right now, typical vitamin A supplemental recommendations assume that those cows have been on green pasture for a majority of the year. They also assume that those cows have built up sufficient stores from being on green pasture that the cow can use to meet, make up the difference from whatever the supplement doesn't provide to help uh, meet her vitamin A needs. And um, right now we know that this first bullet point is not true for all systems. There will be times when that cow is not on pasture for a good chunk of the year. But so in that case, supplementation needs to be increased for those cows that are in um, longer term confinement or um, getting brown forages for a large or consuming brown forage for a good chunk of the year. And that's because they have little access to green pasture. They really don't have a lot of opportunity to build those vitamin A stores. And this second point here is really the current focus of my research is uh, figuring out exactly what those cows in longer confinement situations need to be provided versus the cow that's out on pasture for most of the year. So based on what is known so far about vitamin A needs in cow-calf systems, these are our current recommendations for vitamin A supplementation. So if the cow is out on green pasture, the cow doesn't need to be provided with any vitamin A supplementation. She's getting enough of it in her diet. But if that cow is out on pasture during the summer and then in the winter, she goes on a dormant range or gets hayed during the winter, um, this is where you we suggest providing what is currently recommended for cows in these different stages. So 36,000 international units per day for a pregnant cow, and then that's going to go up to 51,000 IUs per day for a lactating cow in gestation. And then here in long-term confinement, 
you'll notice that these numbers go up substantially and these numbers here are listed as ranges. And that's because we've accounted for the greenness of the forage that's going to be in the diet. So if you look at the low end here, we are suggesting a, an amount for a pregnant and a lactating cow, a pregnant and a lactating cow based on, um, we're assuming that she's getting a really high quality green forage in the diet. And then on this higher end here, the range, we're assuming that she's not, she's getting a lower quality brown hay in her diet. So that supplemental vitamin A recommendation goes up. And it is a, a range here. And just, again, just notice that the supplemental recommendation is going to increase for a lactating cow compared to a pregnant cow. So looking at supplementation considerations, these are just, I've just laid out again here, those supplemental recommendations from the previous slide in those different scenarios, but I've also included here all along in this column, what that cost would be to provide this level of vitamin A supplementation for a cow over a six month period. So if, your cow was pregnant and you provided the 36,000 I use per day, the cost for one cow over a six month period to provide that level of supplemental vitamin A would be 59 cents per cow. And that cost obviously goes up here in long-term confinement as you think about providing more supplemental A to those cows that haven't been out on green grass. And over here, I've also included the concentration you would need to look for in a four ounce mineral if you were aiming to provide this level of supplemental vitamin A to the cow. So again, notice the, the concentration you would need in a four ounce mineral vitamin package is going to go up for these cows that need more vitamin A supplementation. And I'd also like to mention that you can stick to the lower end of these ranges for a cow that's in long-term confinement if you feed. I just want to emphasize again that if you're feeding a really, really green hay, you can reduce the amount of supplemental vitamin A you provide. But if you're providing a lower quality forage in the diet, such as stalks or wheat straw or a lower quality hay, then we would need to think about providing that cow this level of supplementation. I'd also like to point out a couple other considerations you should think about when you are providing a vitamin A supplement to cows. So vitamin A, when exposed to heat, light, or moisture becomes degraded. So if you're, say for example, you want to purchase uh, your supplement in bulk, we recommend purchasing that in fall or winter time when the weather's a bit cooler, if you're going to have to store it for a while, just because, or just to help minimize the damage or destroying that vitamin A in your supplement. And during storage, again, just keep it protected from heat and light and as well as moisture because if you don't, you're probably going to be providing less vitamin A to your cattle than what you had initially planned on. So just some kind of take home points here. Two really big things I want you guys to walk away with is that vitamin A supplementation is going to be important for cows where in those situations where her intake of green forage is, is limited. And we really need to think about increasing that supplementation for that cow that's in long-term confinement. And that's because she hasn't been out on green grass to be able to build those stores. So her supplemental needs are, are going to be much greater.
And then again, just want to really re-emphasize that cow vitamin A status is going to be very, very important in late gestation because that's where it's going to be really important for that calf that isn't born with vitamin A source because that cow's vitamin A status in late gestation is going to dictate the amount of vitamin A that makes it in the colostrum. So if your cow has low vitamin A stores and is deficient, she's not going to put a lot into the colostrum. And as a result, the young calf is going to have some health issues and have an impaired immune system and just be more susceptible to disease and things like that. So that is all I have for today. And I just want to say thank you to Great Plains Live Co Livestock Consulting for helping sponsor some of the research that's being done on this topic. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me using the email below. And again, thank you for your time today.